strap you down. <sighs> okay, guys. Oh, sorry about that. I am uh, a little late, but I'm here. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Nikki with Homeschool Knockouts, and today I am bringing you a review of Michael Clay Thompson's Just the Writing Component of Michael Clay Thompson's curriculum. It's called Sentence Island. Sentence Island. Now, if you're looking for this book or if you have this book, you might have a different cover. I have, I think this is the second edition, okay? Now, Michael Clay Thompson, or at least the publishing house, which is Royal Press Fireworks, they put out new editions like it's going out of style, like it's a fashion show. And uh, this is, I know it's on here, but it's, it's, I think it's the second edition. Um, but if yours looks different than this, don't worry. So long as the other books are the same edition, you will be fine. Okay. So we are talking about Sentence Island. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I don't have all my fancy stuff. You see, I was late getting here. I don't have all my fancy stuff to, uh, um, uh, to put up with all the, you know, the prices, the features, pros and cons. We're going to go old school. Okay, now just so you know, if you're watching this on the um, the playback, I'm going to try to try to front load all the information for the first 10 or 15 minutes. Let me set my timer, and then um, and then I'll start to take questions and answers and things like that. So we're gonna jump right into it and let's go. All right. So the first thing, hold on, y'all. Okay. If you're watching this on the playback, I apologize. I just have to put the title in this so you guys know uh, what we're talking about. Um, review, writing review, I'll oh, forget it. I was gonna have a little crawl right here, but never mind. Okay, so let's jump into it. I got some comments coming in. Hey, uh, hey, love for all. All right, yes, girl, you made it. Okay, so y'all know I have a preferred writing curriculum. What you don't know is that it took me a long time to get to the writing curriculum that we currently use. I've gone through lots of different writing curriculum. Now, some of you know this, some of you don't. I do have a master's in education with a focus on curriculum design and course development. So I love, I just like buying curriculum, like buying handbags and shoes. People, women do that. I do curriculum. So we're going to go through this. Now, you guys are lucky because I have... Um, an extra copy that's not too uh, <laughs> marked up with my kids stuff. Now, for Michael Clay Thompson's writing curriculum, you're going to have to chop it up, okay? What do I mean by that? For Michael Clay, my MCT, also known as MCT, for MCT, he has... It's like a complete package. It's a language arts package, which I like. Well, if you just want the writing, which I love, you, you can buy the books by themselves. This is all you need if you only want the writing component, not, I'm gonna, I might have to eat my words on that. You're going to need, sorry, y'all. You're going to need this too. You're going to need this. So you're going to need three books, <laughs> okay? You're going to, I'm going to go over why you need those three, but to do the writing component, these are the three books that you're going to need. Now, let's go over price. I think I have the banners in here so we can um, remember where we are. Um, I think I took them out. All right. All right. I was unprepared with this part, guys. I'm sorry. So I'll just wing it. So for price, but I do have my notes. Okay. The one thing about MCT versus a lot of other curriculum on the market it's really expensive, y'all. I can't even sugarcoat it. Compared to a lot of other curriculum out there, it is very expensive. Now, if you wanted to get the nuts and bolts of the writing curriculum, which is Sentence Island, this is level one. This is the entry level for the writing curriculum. This would typically be geared toward an eight to 10 year old or like third and fourth grade, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, one thing that Michael um, suggests is that if you have an older child and they're just and you want to try this curriculum, start them 
at level one. That's what I did for that other curriculum that I've used. I had my seventh grader starting at the third grade level. It was no problem. So no shame in the game. And luckily with this, it doesn't have a grade level on it. So if you have an older child who is struggling or if you find their learning style gels with something like this, then start with Sentence Island. Now, having said that, um, let me just give you, uh, let me give you the pricing. Okay, so for Sentence Island, now to buy these books, not a lot of places you can get these books. The main place to get the books are on Michael Clay Thompson's website, which is Royal Press Fireworks. I will link that down below. There's also eBay. There are also homeschool um, swap groups where you can try to, you know, uh, get a good deal on a book from another parent. But if you go to the website, you'll have three different prices, okay? Uh, Michael's going to sell this as a hard copy as an ebook and then as a hard copy and an ebook okay so but i'll just give you two prices so for the hard copy for this bad boy right here okay that's a 256 pages this copy is 42 dollars and 50 cents if you want the ebook that is 32 dollars for the ebook that you print out on your own okay and cobble together so you can see how it can it it can start to add up. This is just the first book. You got a couple more books to go. Let's go. Um, you have, for each book, you have a student book and a teacher manual. Now, there are two schools of thought on this, okay? Personally, I say, personally, this is just me. This is just me. I say get the teacher manual and you and your child both work from the teacher manual. And when I, when I flip through the book, you're going to understand why. Get the manual. I mean, you've got the bucks to spend. Go ahead and buy the teacher manual in addition to the student book. They're identical. They're just extra things in the teacher manual, little overlays that distinguish it from the student book. It ain't that much important to me, in my opinion. But there you go. So you have this book, the student book, and then you would have the teacher manual. So you see how that starts to add up? The student book is, what did I say, $42. The teacher manual is $52. That's $100 just to get going, okay? And then when you bring in the other two components, because when you're doing Sentence Island, okay, Michael Clay Thompson, his approach to writing is grammatical base. It's also narrative. So if you're into curriculum that is story-based, you know, it's narratives, then, or classical, this is for you. Having said that, he likes to focus on grammar. So he, for every level, level one all the way to level seven, which is up to the high school level, he wants you to start with grammar, 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 grammar. And for every grammar book, you have the student book and you have the teacher manual okay so basically for every book you need two books for writing you need two books the student book the teacher manual for grammar you need the student book the teacher manual okay this would be your uh now this one is your practice book okay this you have to have okay there are two books for that which is doesn't this all sound confusing? If you can get past all the different books you need, it is a good program. Suffice it to say, for every book, there's a teacher manual and a student book. I will show you the ones where you don't really need the teacher, you don't need the student book, okay? You can get by without it. For the practice book, if you were an e uh, English major or you have an English degree and you know your... Um, you know your parts of speech, you know your sentence structure inside and out, you won't need two books. But it's something like this. Hold on, let me let me get to a complicated one. <laughs> uh, let me see, let me see. Okay, well, that's not complicated. But if you, uh, if you, if you're shaky with clauses and phrases and uh, 
all kinds of complicated constructions of a sentence, you will want the teacher manual because it will have the cheat sheet. It will have all the answers written down below when your student starts the diagram. So let me just reel it back in. This program is expensive. Okay, let's move on, okay? So say you, you go on eBay and you get a good price, okay? You get a good price, okay? Remember, to get this book, this baby is 40 bucks, okay? But you have to start with this. Now, it's a writing curriculum, but it's grammar focused. So you always start with grammar. And this book is $37, okay? I want you to start putting these, these prices in your head. This book is $37. This is, I'm sorry, this is the teacher manual. This book is $45, okay? So now let's go through it, okay? So that's the price, okay? I don't want to scare you off with the price. It's a good program. I pay not a lot. I think maybe $15, $12 to $15 for these because I went on eBay, okay? So that's what you can do. Hold on, I have some comments. Let me just catch up with the comments. All right, coffee and cream. I'm glad I caught you live. Happy that you're back. Thank you, my dear. It's good to see you guys. Hassan! It's good to see you, my dear. It's good to see you. Uh, hello, Kadesh. Hey, Kadesh. They used to have them on Kindle for $9.99, and they, they took them off Kindle? I didn't know they were on Kindle. I only bought the island level and two from the town level. Girl, you had a gold mine and didn't even know it. <laughs> Well, maybe maybe you can keep checking and see if it's, you know, if they brought it back on Kindle. Because honestly, for such a great program, it is pretty pricey. And if you were to buy the complete set, if you wanted the complete language arts program, which is great because it encompasses poetry, um, vocabulary, literature, all of that, it's going to run you like $245 to close to $500. That's just for language art. You haven't even factored in your science, your math, you know, your reading, your literature books, if you, you know, if you want separate books from what's in the program. So keep that in mind. But if you just want the writing curriculum, let's get going. Okay. So to get started, okay, you're like, okay, Nikki, come on, just come on. To get started, you're going to crack this baby open with your child, Grammar Island. Remember, we start with grammar because this is a grammar approach writing curriculum. I have a teacher manual. Do you need a student book for Grammar Island? No, you don't. I use this with I use this book with three kids. It's falling apart. Oops, yeah, it's, it's, it really is durable, but you know, it went through through three of my sons. I use this with three of my kids. It was just fine. Okay. So this is what it looks like. And I did not. Yeah, I know. Uh, love for all. It adds up. That's why you want to, um, you put, you might want to put alerts on eBay or even on Google. Um, an alert to where um, you go online and you say like Grammar Island sale or whatever. And, but you go to like Google alerts and you fill it in. And then whenever that comes up, you'll get notified, oh, alert for whatever, whatever. And then you can go see if there's a really good price um, for the item that you're looking for. So that's one way to think about it, okay? Now, let me say, here's my recommendation. For your young kids, or if your child was a struggling writer and you're like, you know, let's just blow it up, start from scratch. I would, before, you know, the, for some of you, my old heads, you know what writing curriculum I use. But for this, I would start with this. Why? Because the one thing I like about a literature or a narrative approach to learning, which typically falls into the classical homeschool approach, but I'm eclectic. So I'll take from whatever, I'm greedy. I'll take from wherever is going to feed my need for my kids. But the approach here, there's... It's storytelling and um, you find out the why, why am I learning this? Why is this so, especially for English, because English is the hardest language to learn, not phonetically or, you know, like, like Chinese or Arabic or something, but just because of all the rules, right? The grammar trips up students trying to learn this language, whether they're foreign or a citizen here and, um, or, or native born. <laughs> so, it's it's very complicated. And if you're just doing 
if you're just doing writing from a procedure background, what does procedure mean, Nikki? Nikki? It means, okay, here's a noun, here's a pronoun, here's a verb, this is what they do, this is what it means, and then go ahead and start writing. But you don't know why. You don't know how it all, you don't know how it all fits together. It's kind of like math. They say memorize, 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 drill and kill, drill and kill, which has this place, like for multiplication, whatever. But if you don't understand why, you know, 10 plus 10 is 20 or 10 times 10 is 100. Uh, if you don't understand that, you're always guessing. You, you don't have a solid foundation. And uh, curious, I said that. I said that because there is math. Okay, let me, I don't want to scare you all. There, there's not math in here, but it talks about writing almost like math. For example, let me just, let me just don't, don't let the math scare you. Hold on, hold on. I know I'm all over the place. That's, that's because it's alive. When I do this over, it's, it's not. Okay. So when we're talking about, I'm a proponent of curriculum that incorporates as many subjects at once as possible. Now look. Now, I said math, but, but hear me out, okay? Don't run for the heels. You see this right here? Look at that, okay? These are your, your noun verb systems, okay? Um, and this is um, one thing that I like about MCT's program are the visuals, okay? What does that look like? Number bonds, right? You have like, uh, you know, oh, I can't see upside down. Like say ten and uh, four, and then you would have four would be two plus two, and then the ten would be like five plus five. You know what I'm saying? Number bonds. So you have letter bonds or sentence bonds here, and as the sentences get more complicated, this is like a cheat sheet. Oh my gosh! And listen, osmosis. That's real, y'all. Once you start, once your child starts to see this over and over again throughout the book. They start, sometimes they start to remember where they've seen them. So they already know based on the bubble and the placement, what part of speech it is or where it goes. Okay. But um, let me, uh, let me get back to what we we're talking about. Okay. So real quickly. So the price, it, it averages about 30 to $50 per book. Okay. And you need uh, to get going. You need the Sentence Island book, you need the Grammar Island book, and you need the Practice Island book, okay? There are three books, all the student books, and then there are three teacher manuals. So all in all, you would need six books to get going with the writing program, okay? Think about the price there and whether um, you can get some discounts on that, okay? This um, program is a classical approach. Um, it is secular. Um, in its um in its perspective it's secular and it is aimed for students that are gifted and a lot of times when i see curriculum that says gifted i just think oh that's parent intensive <laughs> for me <laughs> and it is because you got to read with your kids okay you got to read with your kids and you have to kind of uh because remember it's storytelling right it's storytelling so you want to help guide that and um and see what their thought process is so it is it's not super t teacher intensive but you have to be there by, by the side of your child and if you don't like to be sitting next to your child <laughs> teaching you know that might be teacher intensive for you so i'm just putting it out there okay now like i said if you have an older child that's struggling or you just want something different for them please start at level one this is cumulative just like the other program i used to i use it is cumulative so there are so many things built upon it so if you your child is in let's say uh the uh the sixth grade three four five so that would be like level four they would be totally lost at level four in sixth grade send them all the way to the back of the line or the front of the line at level one. And then you'll just probably go through it quickly once things might click or gel faster and then you can move on. It's not a race, okay? It's not a race. Um, let's see. Uh, I just want to get some of the notes out. Um, okay. Oh, so on the website, if you want to get a cheaper version of the teacher manual, they do have that option. But you have to buy the expensive 
and I shouldn't say expensive because that's relative, right? You have to buy the whole homeschool package, which is like what three to five hundred dollars. I mean, that includes the vocabulary, the poetry, the literature, the kit, and the caboodle, and then you get the the parent manual, okay? And the parent manual, um, and I think the reason why they include that with the package only is because it has the week by week lesson plan, which a lot of people want to know. How do I how do I chop this up? People want to know. And so they'll, you know, probably pay the extra just so they can have that lesson plan done for them. Okay. So um, but let's go on. Okay. So you're gonna start with grammar. Okay. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is that Michael Clay Thompson likes to front load his curriculum when you first start it. So he's like, you put in all the work with all the reading and everything, and then then you start to do the writing, okay? So your child's not gonna pick up a pen until your child is basically done with this book, okay? Now, what does the book look like, Nick? Hold on, let me catch up on some of these. Hey, Abby, we're using this with our first grader. Oh, very nice. And remember, these guidelines, um, these um, age and grade guidelines are suggestions. Now, what I will recommend is that um, you scaffold. If you're using this with a younger um, student, you're, you'll definitely need to scaffold, especially with the practice island. But that, you know, that could be something you can, you know, you can easily do. Not a problem. I couldn't find the manual. You know what? Depending on which book you're looking for, I would just keep going on eBay or Facebook. The uh, I'm subscribed to like 20 uh, uh, homeschool groups uh, or swaps where you can swap out or buy used, gently used curriculum. So go on there and look for the manual if you want it. Okay. Uh, okay. So Grammar Island. So you're starting with this baby right here. Okay. This is the teacher manual. Now, when I talk about the, um, the manual and why some books you need it and some you don't, for example, this is why. You see these text boxes right here, the blue one and the purple? These are the only things that are added to the book. The student book looks exactly like this. The only thing that is different is that the teacher book is peppered with these boxes. And I'll show you a couple more. And the questions aren't really that essential. They're nice to have. Sometimes they ask Socratic questions because that is Michael Clay Thompson's approach as a classical uh, publisher. You see those? Those are the questions. But it's the questions aren't essential to teaching. The only difference is with the teacher manual is that at the end, you will have some teacher notes, okay? Like this. Teacher resource, this is why my book's falling apart. I keep bending it. So you have your teacher resource section. Obviously, the student book doesn't have that, but this is what it looks like, okay? This is second edition. It gives you some notes. If you want to take a screenshot of that, you can, okay? And it just goes on with more notes on, you know, how to use this, how to take full advantage of this. But look, okay? And then some more notes to the instructor. Okay. And then you get into, you know, basically some worksheets. Well, you have a pretest. You have a pretest, but it's nothing to go online and do a grammar pretest for, say, third grade. Okay. And then you have the answers. But look. Okay. And then you have a post test. So, it's a, um, you have your pre-test and your post-test to see, you know, how much your child is learning. And then, you know, you have the answers to the post-test right there. And then you just have some extra, you know, I didn't really see how this fit in. Just some extra work. I actually had my kid do it because before I realized that there was a, this was a teacher resource thing in the end, but, um, it's, they're like worksheets. You can go to the Moffitt Girls, you know, Annie from the Moffitt Girls on Teachers Pay Teachers, and you can get stuff, you know, like this and print it out. Okay. 
not trying to take away from the curriculum, but I'm just saying, if you're trying to make a financial decision on whether to get which book, always go with this the teacher manual because you at least have the answers. And then you might have to, you know, what's that saying? If it's expensive, it's supposed to cut your time. If it's cheap, it, it adds time because that means there's more you have to do. So you get the, all right, and then you have parts of speech. That's really, that's the resource. It's not that much of a resource for you. It's really just like worksheets. And, and it goes on. It goes on, y'all. It's worksheets. They are, it's literally worksheets, okay? And then a little bit more of a note, right? And then, bada bada boom. That's it, okay? So if you're you're thinking about, okay, we'll get you some extra, you know, pages if you want to print those out for your child to analyze. But there's Google is your friend. I printed out lots of four level uh, analysis examples to print printables. There you go. Because when you're finishing this book, this is when you start this book. Okay. Now all of this. It's really in here, okay? So just think about it. All right. And then it goes over each level, and then it, the book ends. Level one, parts of speech. Level, oop, not that part. I know this is long, y'all. Level two, parts of the sentence. But you see how... They're just saying it. They're not showing you anything. Like what? Okay, I see level three phrases and a whole and ten sentences. So they're not like showing you the diagram of it. Okay, so that's Grammar Town. But here's what I like about it. Okay, so Grammar Town, getting to the review of the book, is divided into four parts. Okay, okay, and each part. It's pretty cool. It's a story, okay? And you see part one is the parts of speech, part two, parts of the sentence, part three are the phrases, and part four are the, are the clauses. Now, Grammar Town is a story. It's a long story. Well, no, it's a, it's a number of stories, okay? And it has artwork in it, but when you're getting through this and reading it, you'll you and your child start to understand what makes a noun a noun or what doesn't make a noun and what makes a pronoun and all of that. And as you get through it, each part of speech is color coded. So all the nouns are blue, the verbs are red. Let me show you a page where you get like a whole bunch of them. Well, I'll get to that eventually. Uh, here's the introduction of adjectives. And then there's a new color for adjectives. And you see how there's not a lot of text on most of the pages? Just enough for the child to digest. And then you have, you know, some artwork with some text on it, part of the story. And then you have um, some more lessons, right? And you see how the color coding we have the purple if you can see that for the adjectives and all throughout the stories when they're actually talking every part of speech as it's being introduced is color coded so through osmosis your child is seeing oh is it's always red you know just as they make the connections in real life they could be working on something in another subject and they're like, oh, what will go here or whatever, whatever. I need a verb or something. And then they might think, oh, I remember seeing all these verbs or this verb or this verb that was read. You know, they start to make those connections. Oh, okay, that's that. Or this was a direct uh, pronoun or indirect object, you know, things that trip up our kids. And they were so used to seeing it in its special color. They know what it is and they know the placement of it. So don't sleep on color coding. I color code my kids' clothes. I look. I color code my closet, everything, okay? Um, speaking of which, that's one, that's one kid calling me. Oh, Dad's going to have to handle that. 
Okay. Oh, my son's coming home. Okay. So, um, and then you gradually start to get into basic diagramming, right? Ba Come on. Basic diagramming. You see how they sneak that in? They did it a couple pages back. But you see how you got, let me stand up. You see? We start breaking it up. Now, the one thing that I really love about Grammar Town or the Grammar Approach is that Michael Clay Thompson, he, does, he doesn't do traditional diagramming. He starts at the beginning with a sentence is of two parts. Let me tell y'all how important this is. Because when my son, when he was in ninth grade, he was in English, first time in public school. And I always pepper him about, oh, what are they teaching? What's the teacher uh, teaching? And the teacher was actually using a Stacy Lloyd uh, study guy. I was, I was like, oh, she could do no wrong in my eyes. Um, House on Mango Street. But I was asking him about, you know, just everything. And he was like, mom, some people don't even know what a Lincoln verb or a Lincoln verb is. Because it doesn't stick. It doesn't stick. But my son, my baby, remember the stories. Y'all don't sleep on that, you know. Okay, so um, anyway, so getting back to the writing. Um, so the, uh, I was going somewhere with that. I forgot. But anyway, it'll probably come back to me. So, oh, so for diagramming. So you'll notice on every page, or almost every page, you'll see the two bonds, the two big bonds, okay? And those represent, and it's in the book, the two parts of a sentence. That's your noun system and your verb system, okay? And then as the book goes along, there'll be a line, in a vertical line with noun on one, the noun on one side and then the verb on that side. And then you go off to the races with the diagramming. Once the kids see it broken down like that, seeing how sentences are deconstructed, then the sentences are not scary anymore. They know every sentence has a place. And because they know why it has a place, every word has a place, then they know why that word shouldn't be here. Split infinitives, stuff like that. So then they'll understand, oh, you can't have, um, I like um, really to eat food. I and mean, that sounds bad. But, you know, that's a split infinitive. So when you know the place of the words, the parts of speech, then you know who's in the wrong chair. Uh-uh, you move over here, verb. You move over here, pronoun or whatever. So that's, those are happy discoveries that um, I noticed with my kids, okay? So let me see, any questions? Let me go through here. Let me go through this some more. So you see, once again, it's osmosis, y'all. It's, it's split up, okay? It's over and over again, the kids start, your children start to see how sentences are divided, okay? Then you have, you know, your verbs in red, okay? Let me see if I have any uh, questions. Okay. I alternate with the IEW for younger students, so that's been my extra worksheet. Excellent, because here's the thing. If you're the kind of parent where you got to have some output, you like you got to see something at the end of the day, or maybe you're with a charter or an umbrella school and you have to have work to turn in, it might take you a month or two to read through this meaningful, meaningfully before you get to, you know, the actual work work, right? So... I got a solution for that, but how, how far are we into this? 33 minutes. Okay, let's get going. All right. So, all right, let me get toward the end where you can see, you know, you know, more of the sentences, how they're in, you know, working together. Now, you're going to see verbs, action verbs, linking verbs, which these kids should have seen in my son's class because they forgot what they were. But, you know, if they read the story, they would probably remember. But just getting to, Talks about complete predicates. You get into clauses. Um, and then you start to get into the diagramming. Now, your child is not diagramming yet, okay? They're just reading about it through stories. Let me leave it on, let me leave it on this page for just a second. All right, let me do on this side. No, I don't want to scare y'all. Okay, look. Start here. Look at that. Fuzzy caterpillars are funny. So the first line, remember, this is a four analysis diagram. So the first line is going to be your parts of speech. 
So, you know, you have your adjective, verb, noun, adjective. The next line is going to be your part, the part of the sentence. So you have your subject complement, you have your linking verb predicate, and your subject, okay? Then you have your clause, I'm sorry, your phrase, okay? What does that say? There are no prepositional phrases in this sentence. Boom, go on to the next one, clauses. One big clause. This is a simple sentence. And then here is your little note. Okay. This is why you will get the teacher manual and not, I'm not saying don't get it, but this is why you would get the manual over the student book if you had to choose because you wouldn't have all the extra. Well, you would have this, but this is also this part here. It's also in the practice sheets that you see here. And we'll get to that in just a minute. And for the teacher manual, you want the teacher comments, okay? And then um, and then here's a more complicated sentence, okay? A more challenging sentence, all right? And look, it's color-coded so they know exactly what each word is. And guys, when they do the practice part, which is 100 sentences that they diagram, they will be exposed to so many words, they'll just eventually know, especially for the tricky ones, that, okay, I know what this one is because I know this is this color and this color means this. Kids will make those connections, okay? There you go. And look, because there is a number of writing as it gets further in, make that your kids, you know, if they're younger, copy work. You know, let that be their copy work, okay? Their handwriting. All right, so... Uh, let's move on a little bit, um, cause that's really it. That's really it. So the last sentence of this book where you're doing parts of speech, parts of a sentence, phrases and clauses, that was it. Okay. It reviews what you went over in Grammar Island. Okay. All color coded for you. And then it's a nice, sweet goodbye. And then hmm, you're like, all right, go on to the next book. Bye. That's it. Now, how long will it take you to get through this? Now, with my kids, they like the stories. And they wanted to plow through it. So sometimes we would read ahead and then we, we would have to back up a little bit because they might have forgotten something because they, they were into the stories. Remember, they were younger kids. Your older kid would be like, oh my God, they'll probably roll their eyes. So you probably could go through here faster than um, just your, your younger kids. But I for us, I say a good month. Um, I, I planned on a week and a half for each part. There are four parts, okay? I plan. I planned a week and a half. So about maybe four to six weeks, that depends on you. You might blow through the first section or you might blow through the third section, which is prepositional phrases. If your child knows their prepositions, that might be an easy part for you that you can get through very quickly. So there you go. So when you're doing your writing, remember it, writing is not just sitting down and just brainstorming and coming up with something. A lot of times for kids, Sometimes they need to, before they figure out what they're going to write, you know, they, they, they have to kind of put things together into perspective. Like they can write a sentence, uh, them going under the car. They have the idea. They know what they want to say. They just can't, you know, it's the, the coconut cup, you know, you know, switching around. They don't know the order or why. Why is um, this word here? Like, um, she eats, um, they give them, they give them all the apples. Why is them here? And how come, why them instead of they? All these questions, they don't know. So when they read, when they learn the grammar components, then they start to understand why, okay? And then their confidence is up. And then, bing! Bring on Practice Island, okay? Now, have we started this yet? Now, here, now, hmm, this is what I would do. 
I'm not saying you do this. This is what I would do. I start with this because it's going to introduce you to all the elements of uh, the four level analysis. Okay. I would say maybe if you're not doing a lot of literature or a lot of other reading, because it is reading, I would say for me, what I did for, I think the second time, because I didn't use this the second time around the first time I was just grammar town, grammar time. Um, I would, I would get, I would say maybe around maybe prepositions. I would probably break this out sentence Island. Or if you don't mind doing, you know, extra reading, you could do, uh, stick with this, get at least halfway through and then bring this out. Okay. And then when you're halfway through here, you'll be finishing with this. So you can start on that. That sounds confusing, huh? But don't worry. When I do a follow-up video for how I use this, I'll show you exactly how I did it. Now, moving on to the sentence island, the actual, well, they're teaching writing, okay? Not the grammar. Now, first thing you're going to notice, and then this book, uh, you know, it's going to be like 40-something bucks. This book, what you're going to notice for, from the table of contents is um, what I have underlined here, what I did with my kids when I broke this down. It looks like just titles of a chapter, right? Of a book. Two sides, you know, Mud thinks about, you know, doing and being, blah, 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 blah. No, really look at it. Two sides. It's going to be your subject and your verb. Remember those two number bonds, the two main number bonds, the two main parts of a sentence? That's what that means. Next one, doing and being. Well, that's going to be verbs. You're doing verbs and you're being verbs. The next uh, chapter, agree. So verb agreement, you know, making sure your subject agrees with your verbs, right? And then you know, the next one, putting mud in place. Okay. Now, where do you place these words? Placement is real, right? You have placement is key. And then um, going deep, I forgot when, what that one was for. And then you start getting into sentences. So by the time you finish the story, <clears throat> You know, you have been modeled so many ways of how a, okay, you know what? If I had to sum this up, this is one big rubric. You know how when you were growing up, <clears throat> you would write something, you know, in class and your teacher would just write 85, 69, 99, put a little smiley face, a little sad face with one little tear on the side, but they didn't put a lot of feedback or they just put a feedback. Um, Needs more development. Something a little basic. You know, when you needed a whole paragraph as to why you got that grade that you didn't deserve or you deserved. So this is like a rubric. You know how a rubric is where it has zero to five, zero being poor, like what you didn't include in that um, uh, story or essay or paragraph, and five being the ideal version of or a good model of a paragraph let's just say paragraph okay now from zero to five you'll see at level one at one you've included a number of elements maybe things agree maybe you flushed out the ideal you know the uh the next two you know it has a little bit more information in the paragraph and then three four and five you, you get to a point where you have a complete solid, good example, excellent example of a paragraph. So when you start to write, you know how they always say, um, refer to your rubrics as like a checklist to make sure you have all these elements in place. This is kind of like what this is, because when you start to read through this, stay with me. When you start to read through this, you will understand exactly what a good sentence looks like and what a bad one looks like. So now you can compare, you know, you know, the old boyfriend you had, you didn't know his good side until you saw his bad side when you went to his mama's house, his family's house. So, oh, you really not so, <laughs> you have to have, see the contrast so you can make a decision, right? So, you know, you don't know what looks good until you see what looks bad. So as you're reading through here, the stories of Mud, he's a fish and, um, you know, it's all blue. It's not a lot of 
not a lot of, not a lot of color variations. I think it's like no color variation. But the story, let me stand up for this. The story is good. Okay. Maybe not. All right. So, hold on, my old notes. Let me try to see. Okay. Here we go. Now remember you did Grammar Town, right? I mean Grammar Island. So you know your bonds. Subject predicate. That's why you start with this one first. Hey, that's your primer. So now you got your subject and your predicate with more words to it, okay? So you're starting off with this story and your subject and your predicate. And you see the line here, that's prepping you for diagramming. It's also prepping you with a Jedi mind trick. Sent a sentence has two parts, the noun system and the predicate slash verb system. And then where you go from that is your business, but that's what you got, okay? Now, as you're reading through this, you're gonna start to see what fragments look like. You know, remember what I said? Poor sentences, what that looks like, okay? Now we're in chapter two, the doing and the being with the verbs, right? So you got, you know, he sure does love his blue. And blue's my favorite color, but you know. And just so you can see the level of writing, okay? So, you know, for your older kid, I mean, they'll blow through this, but don't let them take it for granted because there really is learning in this, okay? You'll start to see um, they start to color code, but the color coding is different from the grammar uh, island, okay? And it's not all throughout the book, okay? But here you go. Y'all listen. Now, I have a journalism degree, but I did a lot of English, and I used to um, grade essays. Um, when I lived in New York City. And let me tell you, one of the things like fractions that trips up a lot of kids are indirect and direct objects. It's like the fractions of math, okay? But here, you see that? You start to get a little idea of where it goes. Stay with me, you're gonna, you're gonna see more, okay? Now you're getting into your action and your linking verbs. And that's what that looks like if you want to see how they start to explain it. So you'll notice this is all in story form, guys. So when you're driving with your kid or you're in between running them around, you can go over the story with them. Okay? It's, um, I like this because now you're starting to color code it. But it's a different kind of color coding. One coloring is for the subject part and the black is for the verb part. Okay? Look at that. And then you have some diagramming, you know, at the bottom, the first level. See how it's pulling it all together? It's prepping you. He's very intentional with this. He's prepping you for this, okay? Remember, this was prepping you for the number bonds. This is prepping you. Wait, this is prepping you for the analysis, okay? Now, we got some pitfalls coming up. I, oh my goodness, I remember when my child saw this page. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you see how I put pitfall. Pitfall. All right. He didn't like all these lines right here. He was like, what's going on here? He was like, ah, it looks like, the, the, you know, he thought it was like Star Wars shooting lasers, you know, because, you know, this, to most people, it looks like a fish. But, you know, it's abstract and it could be like a, a meteorite or something heading to smash into, you know, I got boys, smash into all these planets. It took on a whole Star Wars thing. I had to back off and say, okay, let's just rethink this. But anyway, just letting you know, that was my experience. But you see how they, they start to add more of the color, okay? And the color is more for emphasis, not for parts of speech, okay? Now we're into chapter, wait, hold on, what's this one? Oh, action, okay, action and doing. Okay, um, some descriptions of action versus doing. I mean, being versus doing, if you wanna see how they approach that, okay? And now we're on to chapter three, which is the agreement, agreement, okay? More stories. Now listen, if your child loves to read, y'all can cuddle up and read and talk about it. Talk about what's going on. Because when they're talking about, they're not just saying stuff for the sake of saying stuff. It all relates to the words. And so 
that's great. But if your child don't like to read or it's like doesn't want to read with you, then um, I have lots of other recommendations for curriculum. Okay, but anyway, so you, you start to see here, and if you want to have your child pencil in some things here, that's fine. It's it's not uh suggest I mean it's not saying you need to do that. Okay, now here's the nitty-gritty, okay. So this is where you start to get a lot more instruction, okay? Now, if you want this, if if it were me, I would take, once I re reach this page, you know, if you're planning ahead and you see, okay, we're going, we're heading toward this for this week, I would go to Teachers Pay Teachers. And I love the Moffat Girls, but there are other, so many great, other um sellers on teachers pay teachers and i will go ahead and get worksheets and give them more work on action verbs direct objects indirect objects indirect objects and um the like okay because that's not enough i mean they're still reading and comprehending i prefer to bring in as many sense sensory aspects of learning as possible so you don't have to have them write something every day but you know a couple worksheets or have them grab a notebook paper or their favorite book and take um to say okay my son has karate but it's not until six i would have them take their notebook and maybe or take their favorite book and find five sentences in that book and write it down in their notebook with like, you know, maybe space it out like every five spaces, write the next sentence and have them try to diagram it, okay? And, or diagram it with them, okay? Up to you. You can chop this up any way you can, any way you want, okay? And it, it goes on. This is a long, I hope people watch this. I, I just lie. I just say it's going to be quick, but it, it's just, there's too much. I can't give you snapshot stuff. Let me see if there's some questions. Oh, yeah, hold on. Oops, sorry, y'all. Um, okay. My two kids are doing the live classes with MCT now, level two and level three. It's excellent. Yes. Thank you, Carla. Yes. Also, there are online classes. Uh, Michael Clay Thompson has classes on his website and um, online G3. I'll make all these links down below. Online G3. We've done all their classes. They have a lot of MCT classes. They, I, I know they have the older classes, like they have pair. <clears throat> paragraph town they have magic lens word within a word uh, so they have a number of classes online classes sorry i'm like what grade level is this for at home with Bree, this is um typically third and fourth grade so eight to ten year eight to ten year olds how long would a lesson take here's the thing love for all because this is really just a, a reading book right and then if you halfway through if you want to bring in some worksheets to you know test for understanding or to have your child, who, you know, who, you know, you might want them to be able to write things out, you know. What was your question again? How long would a, a, a lesson take? That would depend on you. If you're reading, um, if you're reading for time, when does your child get fidgety? Do they have an attention span of 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour? Bless you. Um, five minutes. It depends on your child's. Uh, attention span and yours okay so however long your child can actively be engaged with dialoguing with you while reading that's your lesson okay now if you want to add in some written components i would say maybe read you know 10 15 minutes or if you were in grammar town um for each part of speech like just do nouns and pronouns maybe one day the next day just do adjectives you know you can break it up like that and then um if you wanted to give them some follow up work that same day or the next day and then pick up with reading the following day, if you don't want to read every day, that's another way to chop it up. So, you know, 30 minutes, maybe do 15 minutes reading and then 10 minutes of written work. OK. And then, you know, five minutes where you're discussing going over everything. OK, so you can chop it up any kind of way you want. Could this be used as a supplement? Absolutely. If you have your own, this is what I did, <clears throat> I think for my third child. So, um, oh yeah. Okay. So you remember my third child, whew, the child that 
could not stand to write or read, <laughs> but my most imaginative child, I did a video on a different curriculum that we dealt with, but we started with this, but he did not want to read so much. So uh, we, uh, but he, but he liked this. So we used this, skipped this, and went to, you know, and just use our writing curriculum because he had gaps. He, he wasn't really understanding um, prepositions were chopping him up and indirect objects. So this helped to um, give him some foundation in that. So um, in our writing, you know, with our other writing curriculum, you, you know, it's classical based. So it's a lot of writing and especially writing from classical um, sources. So the writing in and of itself is going to be more advanced, right? That's the thing with classical curriculum. A lot of times it's Latin Greek based and it's going to be pretty advanced. So we, but we got on track with that. So you can definitely use this um, as a standalone. Absolutely. Um, you might find that your child is not getting um, uh, Prepositional phrases, for, you know, go to the section in here and look at prepositional phrases, read the story on that and, you know, keep it rolling. All right. Um, part four is put, uh, what was I saying? putting mud in place. Basically, what's the placement of these words? Let's see. Maybe the grammar book could be a supplement, but it's enough. Um, yeah, the grammar book could be a supplement for grammar and a jump off before you start your writing. Remember, we're working with, with littles, right? They're just starting third grade. <clears throat> That's a pivotal time in their development, okay? Uh, emotionally, physically, and physiologically, okay? You're talking about the, 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 um, the brain hand object connection and how you pull that all together to make something to give to somebody to see. Okay. So you could definitely use that as um, a supplement. Um, but is it enough if you do the entire curriculum? You mean the entire MCT curriculum? I don't think I understand you, Carla. Maybe the grammar book could be a supplement, but is it enough? Is that what you're saying? But it's enough if you do the entire curriculum. Um, the grammar book, could be a supplement, but if you're, if you're if you're talking about the whole MCT curriculum, it's part of the curriculum. It's the basis for the curriculum. Okay. After this, you go. After this, actually, you don't get to this till a little bit later on. In the um, oh, I'm at eleven percent. Hey, I thought I was plugged in. Oh, hold on. I came out. Hold on. Let me plug in my um laptop. Okay, I'm at eleven percent. Now I'm at seven. Wait. Hold on. Why is it not charging? Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Okay. Whew, okay. All right. So, um, oh, no. Did I lose my feet? <gasps> okay. No. Here we go. Okay. So, I, I did I answer your question, Carla? So, Grammar Town could be any of this. You know how I am. Anything could be a supplement, right? You find out what the strong point is or what your child's weakness is, and then you come here and you shore up what your child needs. So anything could, to me, anything could be um, a supplement. Okay, Jesus Loves You. I haven't heard of this program. I just ordered IEW to start my fifth grader in writing. Love hearing about resources from you. Maybe I will supplement with this. And that's the one thing that I like. If you find this really cheap, it is a great supplement. This alone, if I had to choose anything out the curriculum, I would do this just because it lays such a wonderful foundation for how words work together. Once you know how they work together, you're good. You don't, you, it's, you know how people say, okay, you, you have to memorize, like for spelling, you just keep memorize, memorizing all these words, all these words, all these words. But if you know the basis of these words, like you know Latin, if you know, uh, uh, really like Latin. <laughs> if you have a very solid foundation in Latin, you're like 90% there with how to spell words. Ask these people who do the spelling bees. Almost all of them have taken a Latin class, okay? 
because instead of trying to memorize, you know, 10,000 words for the spelling bee, you only need to memorize maybe 30, 40 Latin based, you know, words um, that will tell you what this word is or why it wouldn't go with this kind of word. You see what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, piecemeal is fine. Um, oh, and uh, IEW, I used that with my first child when I first started homeschooling because I bought like so much stuff. I liked it because it was like in your face to the point. And, um, and that's on a, that's a whole nother video. All right. So, okay. So back to Sinus Island, we were on chapter four. Let me wrap this up. Cause this is one long baby. Okay. We're talking about placement. All right. Got your stories. Y'all hanging in there. If y'all, if you guys are finding some value in this, please put a like on the, um, the video. I, once again, I don't have my microphone hooked up. It's sitting over here doing nothing. So I hope you can hear me well. Okay, so you start getting, you start seeing the sentences, start getting a little bit more meat, okay? And then, um, oh, now you got here, misplaced modifier. Do y'all know what a misplaced modifier is? You know what a modifier is, right? Changes, it changes something. But instead of just reading one or two sentences describing what a misplaced modifier is, read about it. You'll have that story in your head for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. That's pitfall number two. A lot of people don't know that, okay? And then it goes on. Okay, so you have the dialogue with all the animals talking about misplaced modifiers. How can you not remember that? Okay, just so y'all want to see. Look. Okay. And again, because they are stories, you can have a conversation with your child, you know, while you're having lunch, while they're doing chores. Okay. You know, just more. More of the same. Okay, so let's move on. Do y'all have any questions? And, and it doesn't necessarily spiral back, but it does bring up, you know, concepts from before. So here you go. If there is a direct object, hold on, let me get this right for y'all to see. I always break my spine, but this one's not cooperating. Wait, is that the right page? No, this one. So you, you're back to direct objects, indirect objects, Lincoln verb, subject complement. Okay. So there is a bit of review in it, but it's not written, it's reading. And then, <coughs> speaking of that, <coughs> you start to get more, you know, uh, like your little information page that you can, you know, print out. When you see that, that's the time to go run and grab some worksheets if you want to from the Moffitt girls, because I, I that's what I used <laughs> um, to uh, really milk this. And we would use what I would print out from the Moffat Girls um, for that week. For that week. Okay. You see all that? Look, I can decide which page to stay on. So you do have your review. Okay. And when you see that, that's your cue. If you want to, you know, put out some worksheets or if you want to put them on Brain Pop to watch some videos and have them do some little interactive activity boom all right so more of the same just more stories right pictures in blue and then last second to last chapter gets deep i don't remember this one so we're gonna do it together all right uh what's he talking about what you talking about deep 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 okay i don't remember what he was talking about but hopefully that that page makes sense to you okay and then um Oh, I think, oh, I think it's just kind of a review of what they've been talking about. Oh, no, no, no. Maybe. I don't, know. I don't remember this part. Might have been one of those, one of those weeks. But at least you can see it. There you go. All right. And then, okay, he's talking about.
Okay, he's more talking. All right, let me just, okay. Let me just turn so you can just see. These papers are crunching all over me. All right. Now this is important because look at all the spacing between all these all these sentences, okay? This is the deep part. The deep part, which I don't remember what that was focusing on. So, but we're almost at the end of that part. A little I think I think it just might be like a deeper dive back into what you've done. I don't know. And then we're on to the last part. Chapter six, your sentences. And this is only a couple of pages, okay? So now that you've learned what makes a good sentence and what makes a bad sentence, now you can read the sentences without having to think about them. Just, just read. And I like how, um, um, I forgot to talk about this earlier. When you read this, sometimes a lot of the words or names are intentional, like, Look at that, how it sounds it out. Foul. Foul. You know, I just, I like that. Now you're getting your, your mouth working. Remember, these are third and fourth graders or first graders. I, I like that, okay? So, um, you know, there's like some, for any of you who have ever taken an acting class, you have your verbal warm ups before class. You know, you got some stuff in there. So, there you go. Um, and you, you hear, you got some crazy nonsense words and stuff like that, just to lighten things up because the book is almost at the end, okay? Almost at the end, as is this video, okay? And then, all right, what else we got here? Uh, okay, 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 okay. So, you know, it's talking more, it's showing, it's showing you now, okay? It's showing you, this part looks important. It's showing you, it's, it's, it's basically your summary, if you will, okay? When you write a sentence, you are free. You can take your time and play with things, build the grammar, the balance, the agreements, the placement, the sound. You can write that down, y'all, okay? Okay, so I like that. And a perfect way to you know start to turn off the lights, close the doors, and, now you have these beautiful sentences that have meaning. You can look at every word, tell what every word is and why it is in that part of the sentence, okay? There's your story and there's the, the end or the beginning, which means, and we're gonna wrap it up y'all. You're on Practice Island. Now, depending on what edition you have, I think this is the second edition, your book might be vertical or it might be horizontal. I have both. Um, I have both. You see, this is the teacher manual. And this is when I was buying everything back when I was young. Um, and then here's the student book. Okay, let me show you the difference. Real quickly, it says a supplement to Grammar Island and Sentence Island. Okay, so. This is why you need and you want the teacher manual for the practice island. Excuse me, guys. All right, here are your notes to teachers. If y'all want to take a screenshot of that just to see. Can I get this straight? That's, those are the notes that they're giving you, okay? And you can see it, there's some notes, right? And then it's, going to show you, here's your little reference sheet, okay? This is your reference sheet for all the parts of speech, sentences, phrases, and clauses, okay? And then now you have, okay, an example sentence. This is what an example looks like, right? And then you get into it, okay? But you also notice at the bottom of every sentence is a comment, okay? It's gonna tell you this, what kind of sentence this is, what it's made up of, okay? So that's something you can tell your child after they've done their work, okay? And then um, you have um, instructions for kind of what to say to them about the sentence diagramming. 
can see is two pages. Not too much because the font is actually pretty big. Um, here's your in-class discussion. If you're working with a group of kids or, you know, if you're teaching at a co-op or whatever. Okay. And then you have your one of 100 sentences. Okay. You see how, how it starts and it builds up. Okay. So you'll have your sentence and then you'll, you'll have your four level of analysis. First level, parts of speech. Second level, parts of a sentence. Third level, your um, phrases, prepositional phrases. And your fourth level, your clauses. Okay, and then you have your comments at the bottom. Now, compare that with the student part. Okay, the student part does a slight review with the number bonds. Okay. Oh, oh, just so you know, so for the sentences, remember there are a hundred. You're getting 25 sentences to work on for each part of analysis. So 25 sentences to work on parts of speech. 25 sentences that work on the parts of a sentence. I mean, you'll be doing all of them, but they'll slow drip the other things into it. So um, <clears throat> you'll um, you'll have the progression of, of difficulty, okay? And then you have your eight parts of speech, five parts of sentence, phrases, and clauses. Do I know about all that stuff? Okay, and then you have you have your notes. And then... Oh, we're past an hour. Nobody's going to watch this. And then, um, now, this is the example in the student book. They think they're going to get the comments, but they're not. This is not really an example that's in the student book, okay? And they have a little bit more uh, review here with the bonds, right? And I got to get ready for dinner. I'm going to take my son to karate. And they'll do that for clauses and phrases, okay? You see that? And then finally, oh, my kids, Rabbi Harry, you have your first sentence to diagram. And then that takes us all the way to sentence 100. Now, you saw how sentence, well, she was sentence one looked like my child's handwriting. Busy pelicans constructed nest. That sentence one, and then sentence 100, Fish jumped, birds flew. Now that looks simple to you. That sentence 99, but it's actually not because when you see it in the uh, teacher book, here you go. Let me put them side by side. So this is the last sentence your child will diagram. So the top one is the student book, and this is the teacher book, okay? Oh, there's a skunk outside. Okay. So you think that's an easy sentence. Look closely. Okay? So there you go, a very, very long uh, review and walkthrough of Michael Clay Thompson's, I need to do a thumbnail. I didn't do a thumbnail for this. So all in all, I recommend this writing curriculum with caveats, okay? You need a lot of books and they are pricey, but if you can get a great deal, if anything on Grammar Island, you better get it. I recommend that, okay? Um, and then this one, so you have some output of what your child did, okay? You can, you know, they can, they can show what they've learned, okay? Anyone have any questions? I'll get out of here. I'll let you guys get out of here. Um, it says, I keep freezing on and off. Uh-oh. Hmm. I do have a lot of things open on this laptop. I'm on my old one. I should be uh, on my new one, but I'm so used to my old one. Okay, so, um, so I'm sorry, guys. So I will have, I'm going to have to put another video out I will just make this a 15 minute video with all the nuts and bolts for those who don't want to sit through an hour long video. Okay. So um, thank you so much for sticking with me all this time. Please put a like if you found some value in this. I will link down below um, the website and all the other things that I said in the video. And um, let's see.
Oh, and the last thing I want to say, if you wanted to go to the next level, the one thing about Michael, he's very intentional. The first level is Sentence Island. Okay. Love, that's level one. Level two is, and everything is sentence, right? Like, okay. And then the second level is Paragraph Town. That will be the next level when you finish the sentence level, right? So you're going from a sentence to a paragraph, you know, Paragraph Town and all the level two stuff. Level three, which would be third, four, fifth, six, seventh, eight. Oh, is my charger? I got my generator on. Level three is essay voyage. So you're going from sentence to paragraph to essay. So that kind of tells you what you're going to be working on. So level one is sentence. So you're working on all kinds of sentences. And then when you're done with this level, you move on to level two. Now you're learning how to write paragraphs, right? <clears throat> so you have paragraph town and you have those online classes that teach you that they're called paragraph town on online g3.com. And then you go further on and then now you're going into essays and then after that more, um, Ac well, academic writing. So anyway, let me get out of here. Um, uh, I will be doing, uh, sometime in the next, probably next week, I'll have a shorter version of this out. And, um, let's see, do you use this for the town level and up? Do you, oh no. So for, did I bring, I did bring this out. So for level two, it, you're, it's different. So now you're at paragraph town, which, which, which would be the equivalent of um i think paragraph time is the equivalent of grammar island it's the first one wait is that right i might be wrong about that no i think it's yeah i think it's paragraph town but no so um all this sentence stuff that i showed you is for the first level and then you will move on to the second level which is paragraph town okay uh, any other questions do you use this for town level and up? Did I answer your question, Katesh? So for paragraph town and up, you would use the books in that series. So that would be um, paragraph town. Oh, I forgot. Did I bring any other books here with me? I don't know. But I'll do I'll do a review on that. I will do a review on that. Any more questions? You're welcome, um, Abby. All right, I'm going to get out of here. I love you guys. Um, I will have some more videos coming soon. I'm going to try to get a schedule going so you guys know when I go live and uh, we can all participate together. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't forget to put a like on the video. Share it if you know of anyone who might need this. And I will see you on the next slide. Bye-bye.